Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cardiac Cats channel. Today we'll be discussing the Jaguars running game and the ways they could look to break out next season. That's going to involve us talking about how the run blocking can be improved and we can also talk about the additions they can make to the backfield to supplement the guy right here, Travis Etienne. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, as far as additions to the running game itself, as far as the position of running back. I don't think that's where the improvement really needs to be made for the most part. I think they can make some changes there, but a lot of this is going to come down to the blocking. So we'll talk shortly about the guys we have in-house right now at running back. So the obvious big name you have right off the bat is Travis Etienne. And we saw from Etienne that he can be one of the best running backs in the NFL. There's a lot of hype around the guy and Quite frankly, it's it's well deserved. Um, we look at his stats here. You know, this is all um, squeak one bottom. Go up to the divisional round here. He started off the year behind James Robinson. The team made a shift, and they started having him play as the number one guy. And you see where he broke out here after the Indy game, especially having hundred yard games. But the important thing to note when we look at his stats, there's certain teams that he struggled against it wasn't necessarily that he wasn't playing well especially as we see here with this grade but they just couldn't get the run game going and so the two teams you really see that with because we can't count baltimore because he only had two snaps um kansas city is one of those the yards are below average they're not the absolute worst but it's clear he didn't get going and you look at Tennessee as well, and you've got 32 yards and 17. I mean, he didn't even hit 50 in two games. And it just quite frankly came down to this team going up against really good run defenses. And so we see that over here. Titans, best team in the NFL against the run in this season. And you see the Chiefs are high on this list as well. That was one of their strengths. And we can even talk about the Ravens against Jermichael Hasty, because when you combine the two players, there was 30 yards rushing in that game. And that game was never out of reach until pretty much the very end, it seemed. And obviously the Jaguars came back and won. But you see there's games where he just didn't have a lot of production. And I just, I can't fault ETN for that, honestly, that much. You know, I think there was a lot of problems on the interior for him, especially, but even outside and, you know, with tight end, there wasn't a whole lot helping him, but we've seen how good ETN can be when he's had good blocking, especially when it's been against defenses that struggle against the run. ETN's had huge performances. I think uh, originally when he broke out, he was, I believe, top three in rushers over the last month and that list was funny enough with Justin Fields and Derrick Henry um, don't expect to see a quarterback on that but that's the way Fields plays so ETN you know there's a lot of hype around him that he deserves and I think that you know he's your clear number one guy going forward I don't think there's a person in Jacksonville who's questioning that and the ceiling is honestly much higher I think that ETN could lead the league in rushing yards next year. If the Jaguars played their cards right, I think that is on the table. Not saying I'd bet on it, not saying that that's my expectation, but I think there's moves that they can make. Now, outside of ETN, there's more that running games have to do. You gotta have people who can come in, sub in, you have backup plans, and as well, it wouldn't hurt this team to have a receiving threat at running back and so your other guy that you had this year was Jermichael Hasty. you know after the James Robinson trade and Hasty, I think played pretty well he wasn't a uh, world beater or you know a perfect running back by any means but he did everything he was asked of he even made big plays on this team and you could rely on him when Travis Etienne went down I mean I think even that Ravens game, even though he had 28 yards, he still got a touchdown for like, gosh, I think 20 or 30. I mean, he finds a way to contribute. 
And so I think Hasty is a guy you want to keep around. Outside of that, um, you've got Snoop Connor you drafted. I don't know if there's anything there. We just didn't really see enough of him to uh, have a ton of confidence going forward. But I think the Jaguars would benefit from trying to bring in a third running back. And I think when they're looking for that guy, they either need to get someone who is going to be able to get the short yardage, big and strong, or go after receiving threat. So I think the perfect choice for this team, if they're looking to address it in the draft, is probably Kenny McIntosh. McIntosh, um, he's the leading receiver in college this last year. I believe he had over 500 yards with Georgia. And from the get-go for me, when I was watching running backs from college, he was the one that stood out the most, honestly, before I even knew a lot of those stats. I think as a rusher, getting a guy like that in the late third or the fourth round, I think it'd be a huge addition to this team. Because you have a guy who could have the upside of being able to start if you're required to start him. Say ETN goes down to injury again. Um, but in addition, a guy who can catch out of the backfield. Someone who's going to add that element to your game. Um, he's just someone I'm super impressed with, and I think he'd be a good choice for this team. But there's another option, too. And not one I'd take, but something to throw out there. The Jaguars, if they want to set up a really great running game in Jacksonville, why not look at adding someone higher in the draft? You could go after a guy like Jameer Gibbs. Say he falls, it doesn't go as early as he should. What if he's available, say, at 56? You know, I, I think you could make an argument if he's available there, maybe he's the best player on the board. But that's not the way I'd go. Um, I think that there's better things they can do there. Probably looking at tight end in that round, but truth is you don't know how the draft is going to fall. And so... It's an option the Jaguars can look at. I'm sure they will investigate all the players in the draft and seriously consider it. But as far as additions, I think this team just needs a role player at running back. So now that we've talked about that, we'll get into the run blocking, which is the meat of this video. Because I think that's where the improvement has to take place. So once again, we're on PFF for this. Uh, hopefully I'll actually have some different websites up in the future because I realize all my videos are uh, very PFF based. But this is where I get a lot of information and you know it helps with it and you take things with a grain of salt because oh, well, sometimes things are off. Um, for example, if we open another tab here, I'll get I think it'll show the rushing. Yeah, so run blocking for all these teams. PFF has the Jaguars ranked as the 30th best rushing team. And quite frankly, I don't think that's true. I don't think they're that bad at running the ball as far as how they block. But at the same time, this team was not top half of the league in run blocking. And what's going to make things interesting for the Jaguars, not in the good way, they have good pass blockers on this team. But they have questions at run blocking. Do you keep guys who are really good at protecting the quarterback but can't get your run game going? Or do you take a shot on someone else? That's a question I think they're going to have to ask. And ultimately, the pass is going to be more valuable. That's where you need to be good at protecting. But they need to improve the run blocking. And I don't think we're going to see the exact same offensive line come back this next year. Something's going to shift somewhere. So we'll go through the different positions that are involved in blocking. So go from left guard to right guard. And we'll also talk about tight end because that does factor into this. So first of all, at left tackle. I don't know why I said left guard to right guard. It would be left tackle to right tackle. So Walker Little and Cam Robinson were your two left tackles this year. Cam Robinson, if he's around, you can almost lock him into the left tackle slot. I think that if they had a battle at training camp, Walker Little could earn that role. But I don't think the Jaguars are going to move Cam Robinson 
to another position or sit him when he's making you know 22 million on the books this year it doesn't make a ton of sense for the team you know maybe they look at trading him if that's the way they see things or you know maybe they do move him but i don't think that's that's going to happen i think it's a little unrealistic even if there's an argument to trade him or to do something else there and cam robinson as a run blocker he's not amazing but i mean you see out of all of our offensive tackles and guards and all he's not far down the list it's a respectable grade you could do better but i think the pff grades in general are are already low on jacksonville so you can accept how cam robinson plays in the run blocking at left guard you have ben barch and he was one of the better blockers for this team but your problem there is you're working off a five game sample size he was good when he played this last year but is that going to be good enough for you to not make a move to improve at that position i don't really know at this point what the answer is to that if i had to guess i'd say if you could upgrade there you should and ultimately you know when it comes to the draft you're gonna get the best guys on the board as long as you could see them at least playing in some respect in the next couple years so maybe they make a move here but ben barch um he was solid at run blocking luke fortner you see him he's, he's farther down this list he's at a 48 on the season and this goes from zero to 100 so you know he's not exactly all you wanted in the run blocking but truth is this team is not going to move on from luke fortner and their opinion on luke fortner is a lot higher than the opinion that the nfl and the community has on luke fortner so you're not going to see a change there it's not really that much up for debate unless he just completely craps the bet i don't think that'll happen so you just hope he takes a step forward this next year now at right guard you have brandon scherf he get back up in his range with all the other players we've talked about where it's acceptable. And Scherf, you know, he's in his first year with this team. He's getting acclimated to things. You can expect him to take a step forward next year. Well, actually, take a moment here. We'll investigate how he's done in the past at run blocking. See if there was a step down. I believe it was. You see here bad stretch of games there later in the year though he picked it up that's a good sign the last time he had a grade under 60 was against tennessee and that was that was the first tennessee game we see down here his last three years in washington his lowest grade is a 73.7 so with another year in Jacks, can you expect Brandon Sheriff to take a step forward and possibly a big step forward? I would. I think he could, and I think that position is going to be a lot better at run blocking. But now we get to the big question and the big issue as far as the run blocking goes, and maybe uh, things change here. But Jawan Taylor, very bottom here. It's hard to see everything on him, so we will see, come over here and look him up. But Juwan Taylor got under 40 on here. And as a run blocker, you know, despite the uh, promise he had coming out of college, he has not lived up to your expectations there. As a pass blocker, it's an entirely different story. He's done very well there. I mean, he had so many games this season where he would not even allow a pressure on Trevor Lawrence. And so that itself, I think, is so valuable that you have to keep Jawan Taylor down, around here. And you have to hope that the run blocking comes naturally. You have to hope that it finally develops. Maybe it does. But could you look to upgrade your run blocking at this spot? You could. And say the Jaguars decide they don't want to bring back 
Jawan Taylor this offseason. It's too much money. Then if Walker Little moves over there, which would be the obvious move, unless you're drafting someone to play right tackle over him, then maybe your run blocking is better. I think it would be, unless you know Jawan Taylor is slated to take a big step forward. So that's a place you could upgrade. And the final place we'll talk about, and this is the one, there has to be a change made here as far as when this team is rushing the ball. And that's got to be a tight end. And he's actually, Evan Ingram's graded pretty favorably on here. But I know with my own eyes when I watched games, there were points where he just could not block. And it wasn't for a lack of effort or anything of that sort. He's just not a guy who can do that at a high level. And I think we can expect Evan Ingram to be back here next year. I think he should be. I don't see any reason why that can't get done. So now the question is, you know, who's going to be the guy coming in to block on running downs? And so we'll actually, we'll talk about one guy I think would be a great fit. But before we talk about him, we have to discuss what you're going to need from that second tight end. So, first of all, something to consider and why it's likely the Jaguars bring in a prospect this offseason at that position. Doug Peterson is known for wanting to run two tight end systems. And he wasn't able to do that that much this last year because his second tight end was Dan Arnold. Dan Arnold, you can start him out there. But that's not your ideal starter. You'd rather have him in a backup role. And so now that you need a second tight end to play the offense the way that Doug Peterson wants it to be played, you're, you're going to have to look for someone who can not only run block, but someone who can also catch. Because what happens, say when you put Chris Manhurts on the field blocking, Defenses are going to know that that's likely a run play. Because when is Chris Manhurts on the field on passing downs? It's pretty rare. I have saw it a couple times this last year, but it kind of telecasts what's going on when you have players who only know how to prepare really well for one thing. So you have to find a balanced tight end that ideally finds his strength a little more in the blocking. And I think there's a fantastic prospect for that in this next draft. I think it's a guy that makes a lot of sense when you look at what Doug Peterson wants and especially what Trent Baalke wants. And so that guy for me and my favorite tight end that they could add to this team is Darnell Washington. Because when I watch Darnell Washington, I see a tight end who dominates in blocking Someone you're not going to worry about at all at that position. He's a guy who I, I don't see many flaws there. The question about Darnell Washington is whether or not he's going to become a big pass catcher. And you even saw flashes this last season of big catches. Uh, catches you would not expect most tight ends to make. And there's so much potential there. And the way he plays, I think this team loves that word potential. I think they like to go after players like that. And the guy's a freak. I mean, he's huge. I mean, the way, not, not the way they plays tight end, but what he brings to the tight end position from a physical stature is entirely different than anyone we've seen at the position. And you can't tell me that Trent Baalke wouldn't like something like that. That's the exact kind of thing he looks for. And we saw it this last year with the team when they took Trayvon Walker for the first overall pick. So maybe Darnell Washington comes to Jacksonville. That is probably, out of all things, the biggest move I would make to improve the run blocking. But it's not far ahead of left guard for me. I think that's the other place that you really got to look to do something. And... If you don't, well, you just got to hope that Ben Barch is as good as he was this last year and that he can do it an entire season. And ultimately, we don't know as much as the team does, and maybe they feel comfortable with that. Another option they could take 
if they don't want to uh, start Ben Barch, but they don't want to wait until the draft, it's going after someone like Isaac Sumalu, who I've talked about before. Um, I predicted him to the Jags as well early on this offseason. He's, he's a good player. And not only that, but Isaac Sumalo, who we'll go over to, he was drafted by Doug Peterson. So the guys are familiar with each other. This is a player who's gotten better pretty much every year. And we see here in the run blocking, over the years, 67.6. He's one of the best run blockers at this position, at guard. As a pass blocker, he's even better. If we go over to that, swap over to offense, 78.6. You got a lot of blue here and a lot of dark green, and you love it. I mean, how would you like to have that at left guard? It'd be a good addition for this team. Problem is, where's the money coming from? And I think this move probably only happens if Jawan Taylor isn't back on this team. Because someone's got to go that's a big name. And it can't be just cutting Shaquille Griffin or, say, restructuring Roy Robinson Harris or releasing him. It's not going to be a move like that unless they want to restructure every contract they have and set themselves up for a really scary 2024 offseason with players like Calvin Ridley and Josh Allen up for new contracts. I think they've got to be limited in how much cap they push down the road. So this probably comes at a price. Now, the way I would probably address it would be going after this problem in the draft. I've got two ideas to throw out here. And they're just ideas. Maybe they're awful, but you be the judge. First one I definitely don't think is awful is drafting Osiris Torrance. And that comes down, obviously, to whether he's the best guy on the board or not for this team. Or at least close. Osiris Torrance, right now, is projected as the best guard in the NFL draft. And adding a guy like that, especially... A guy who went to Florida, you know, he's a local guy. You like that. Um, and I'm sure the players, or not just the players, but the fans would be huge fans of it. Terrible pun. Um, Osiris Torrance, he'd make a ton of sense. He'd give you a big run mauler in the middle of the field. Just a really damn good player. And someone who could get better as a pass blocker and really improve there and become a great guard in the NFL. But there's another idea that intrigues me a little more. So if you watch the Senior Bowl this last weekend, probably familiar with Dewan Jones now. Dewan Jones, he's a right tackle. It's primarily where he's played. Um, he's a huge man. I mean, he has the biggest wingspan, the largest wingspan that has ever been recorded in NFL history as long as the numbers don't change when he goes to the NFL Combine. He's nearly 400 pounds. This is a big guy, and it's a big guy who can move. But obviously, even though he can move at that size, it's not going to be everything you want. So while he can play tackle... You know, maybe you look at him as a guy who needs to kick in the guard early on and who can be a swing tackle as well. So what if the Jaguars go after Dewan Jones in the first round? You draft him, you probably start him at left guard, and in the long term, you know that he might be able to play tackle. And if he can't play tackle, well, you just got a big man to play guard, who makes your run game way better and can block about anyone. And the other thing I think about in that, especially just really any solution to the left guard spot, you know, I think about what Chris Jones did to this team in week 10 and in the playoffs. They didn't have an answer. And of course they didn't have Ben Barch playing, but how much better is Ben Barch? That's a big question to answer. So... How about getting Dewan Jones early in the draft? Or really just any guy who can move to guard as well, who plays tackle in addition. There's other names you might like there more. Maybe you like Anton Harrison or 
you're bigger into Broderick Jones, not sure he'll fall that far, but I think that's another route they could take. So to wrap this up, the way I look at it right now, I think a really good approach for this team, and it can change if there's a really good player who falls, you've got to take the best guy available as long as you can see them in your future plans. I would love this team taking a really good guard or tackle in the first round. If it's guard, it's got to be Torrance. If it's tackle, you're looking at Dewan Jones, maybe Anton Harrison, one of those guys, and bring him in at guard. Then go get Darnell Washington. You know, if you got trade up for him, I think how good of a player that he can be, it is worth the value you would give up moving up for him. And I trust this team to develop him. I trust the staff. I think they're good enough to do that. And I think we saw with a ton of players who were ridden off this last year, they just need good coaching. So I have plenty of reason to trust Doug Peterson and what he can do and the, the staff he's assembled on this team. So that's what I'd prefer to do. Now let me know what you think about this, how you feel about the running game. But to me, I think this is a huge issue the Jaguars need to approach. It's not as simple as Travis Etienne rushing for over 1,000 yards. There is so much more that he can do for this team. And if you're able to unlock him and you already have your additions in place at receiver with Calvin Ridley and heck, maybe another guy in the offseason, who knows? If you got that all in place, you have an offense that can be the best in the NFL. Maybe not better than the Chiefs, but pretty damn close. So that's how I feel about it. Once again, let me know how you think about it. Um, how you look at this offseason. Maybe there's other needs you think are bigger. And I think there's a huge argument for that. So let me know as well if uh, you've got anything you want to see on the channel. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.